Absolutely, and let's uh, get a peek into what the wind conditions are going to be. Let's send it over to draft. Stefano and Natural, take it away. All righty. All right, yeah, thank you, Darren and Natural, for uh, for that great analysis. As we're getting into game, I'm though. I'm still here. Yeah, I, I, I know you're still here. I know, of course you're still here. You're the most important one. Who was that Aww. other guy? It was, like, it was like Kong or something? I don't, I don't remember. I don't anyway, know. as we're getting into... Who cares about that, too? Yeah, I don't know. No one does. Uh, as we're, he's still in the call, too. Uh, as we're getting into draft now, we can see the first bands from CR takes away the Hecarim right off the bat with Birds Aren't Real responding with I taking off a rally Casual Form going right back with the double jungle ban right off the beginning from Casual Form. Yeah, uh, we've seen uh, already two jungle bans coming in from Casual Form. Burns aren't really with the Aurelia ban. Uh, I believe uh, Casual Reform's mid laner uh, is quite the Aurelia um, player, who is uh, quite proficient on it. As we see the Seraphine now coming in. Seraphine, very annoying champion to play against, so totally understandable ban. And the Cassiopeia is going to be the last ban for Casual Reform. That is definitely a target ban, not something that you will ever see um, and, you know, as a meta band for sure. Yeah. Um, and the Caitlyn. All right. So that is the bands underway. And Bolly Bear is the first pickup for the side of Casual Reform. That's, I can't say that's all that surprising. We've seen in the past, uh, no gap, only, only cap has play, played him before. He's been quite proficient on it as well. As well as, it, uh, oh, sorry, not wrong team, not no gap, only cap, uh, We've seen it for Sean, so not all that surprising, but Lily is going to be the response from Bird Server. All right, and here we have, you know, the jungle matchup that we were talking about, where we have a ganking jungler in the Volibear and the farming jungler in the Lilia. And uh, here, falling behind in farm might be, or might have a very big impact, as if you let that Lilia just get, you know, camps after camps after camps, might actually run into a problem of a very fed Lilia. Uh, we do have the Karma, uh, that is of course a flex pick that could go pretty much in any position besides the jungle. Um, and the Jinx is looking to be locked for casual effort. Yeah, I really like the Karma Lilia, I think that's uh, I think that's really smart. Both of them can fit into almost any team comp just by the nature of Lilia and by how well you can flex Karma. Jinx Thresh is the response for casual reformed, but you know, enough, um, Thresh, of course, one of those champions that does really well with these mobile AD carries, Aphelios, Ferris, Jinx in this case. So that, um, picking up some nice safety as well as a guaranteed scaling in the bot lane for casual reform. Yeah, absolutely. Jinx, Thresh, very strong combo. Uh, the Thresh, as you mentioned, does give that extra mobility. Uh, but it is the Jin that is going to be taken as the answer. We haven't seen that much Jin in the recent patches, but uh, in my opinion, he's still just fine. Uh, especially with something with the Karma that enables him to run even faster. As we see the Rise ban coming through. And now that we most likely have... Um, I'm not too sure where the Karma could go. It's still possible that it goes mid and top, but I am assuming that it is going in the support position. Um, as we will be looking forward to the top and mid picks from both teams, as we see the Victor being focused down. Um, we'll have to see what the other bans are. Yeah. Both of them focusing on the mid lane right now. That's not all too surprising. We've seen a lot of running from both of these mid laners in the past. Both of them like to play with their jungler when they can and make the uh, make these ganks specifically bottom lane. So I understand wanting to get something like the Corky or the Rise that you know do does have this ability to go across the map rather easily with the pack and with the alt off the table. Uh, smart drafting and then Nar taking off on the other side. Not. Um, signifying that they don't think it is going to be the Karma top, and they're exactly correct as Sion gets locked into the top lane. Yep, Sion, uh, very strong pick, extremely stable. Uh, we've talked about it in previous series. He's kind of this uh, immobile rock in the top lane, right? Even if you dive him, that zombie can pick up farm and uh, basically be unpunished after a dive. Um, so very good pick. I really like the, the Scion and it fits pretty well into their composition. Lilia Scion having that uh, synergy where Lilia puts everyone to sleep and then Scion just kind of knocks them up with his Q. Uh, as the Azir is going to be picked up for casually reformed. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't hate, I don't hate the Azir. Honestly, this is a very, 
very hard scaling comp from casual to form to have the volley bag for you know that little bit of early pressure to maybe ease it out but otherwise the jinx azir locked in uh definitely going for this hyper late game scaling uh late game scaling with the heavy front line as well as set gets locked in and that's a that's a threatening team when you look at casual to form you look at them and you think oh god how am i gonna get on top of this jinx how am i gonna get on top of this year and stop this hyper amount of damage yeah, absolutely. Casual Reform does have quite a bit of, um... Oh, but the birds aren't real. Are picking up the Tristana, which I, I really, really like, as uh, this is most likely going to be a Tristana in the mid lane. Uh, we'll have to see how the role swaps go in the actual lobby. Um, so we have two comps that uh, Casual Reform definitely has a lot of scaling options, as you said, with the Azir and the Jinx, and have some early skirmishing power and a pretty good top lane jungle 2v2 with the Volibear set. Um, but birds aren't real. They have a lot of pick potential and they have a lot of um, a lot of crowd control and a lot of possibility to just blow someone up uh, before the team fight even begins. Yeah, no, they they definitely do. And what's what's great great as well about them is not only can they burn it out, but their team comp is so so versatile. And we'll have to keep that in mind. As we just take our competitive integrity break here, it'll be three minutes while the players get loaded into game, but then we'll be right back dominating this game for you. Don't go anywhere. Hello, and welcome back to this first game in between Casually Reformed and Birds Aren't Real. So, now looking at the team compositions once again, we were talking about how there was a lot of flexibility. They kind of landed onto the most default uh, lane positioning imaginable. On the side of birds aren't real, we have the Scion in the top lane, the Lily in the jungle, the Tristana in the mid lane, and of course the Jin Karma in the bot lane. As we see, a bit of what I assume is a counter invade. You kind of just stack in that bush, waiting for the Thresh to walk in. Yeah, no such luck this time, though, as it appears that CR is perfectly content to doing the classic five main lineup all across the map. We can even see uh, Daniel looking looking to be a little bit aggressive on on Reese's Pieces, but unfortunately for Daniel, Reese's Pieces is just happy chilling with his friends there. So unfortunately, unlike a lot of other teams, no level one blood bank can win this game. Sag or yes, Sag. I, I never know how that emote is pronounced. Is it Sage or Sag? I think it's Sag. Is it Sag? Wait, I've never even heard of it being called Sage. Has it been Sage this whole time? I don't know. Maybe I am just out of touch with the Twitch emote game. Uh, uh, I guess Twitch chat will just tell us and maybe insult us for our, just or for my the just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Go for it. That's fair. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Back to Daniel the actual here. League of Legends gameplay. Yeah, just Daniel uh, yeah. getting a little bit of little bit of punching off on Reese's pieces, taking his uh, level one set paths that he's do. Yeah, sets so level one is pretty good. Uh, he did start with his E though. Which uh, makes it a little less powerful than if he took Q, uh, at least in my opinion. As we see this bot lane, of course, is going to be the, fake, the focus of this game. Uh, the Jinx and the Jin, both very good carries. As Murphy taking a very good trade, starting with the Flay. It looks like a King's Land will be able to walk it out, but that is a very big advantage. As we see Arj here going for level 2 all in with the Tristana, of course, very powerful. Yeah, and Murphy looking to hit level 2 here. Has the hook available. Okay, he finds the hook. The zap is going to connect if no cap only gap didn't flash. He has the 4 shot. He does land the W. Um, is that a comet on Jin? I see? Uh, Funky, what do you think about that? Um, well, I wasn't aware that we were playing in Season 8. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I do I do understand what he's going for. He does have. They do have the double comet in lane now, so they do have a very strong lane presence. It's Obviously not going to scale as well, but that just means that this uh, bot lane of uh, Birds Unreal really has to make sure they get a CS advantage or a kill advantage early. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, Comet Jin was a thing. Yeah. Uh, but that was a very long time ago. It's not exactly up to date. Uh, nowadays, Dark Harvest and the Fleet, of course, being the preferred options, depending on whether... You think you can win lane or not? As we see Daniel here really putting a bit of a punch down on Reese's. He's going yeah. to be fine, but still, that's a lot of damage for now. 
both uh, casually reformed. Oh, but it looks like birds are real. Zohir is kind of ghosting here. Okay. No, nothing uh, going to come out of it quite yet. I think he was just waiting to see if uh, Sean would go maybe for the early dive was set because Reese's Pieces was so low, but Sean just comfortable to take the Scuttle Crab, but it's going to be worth it for him because it looks like he's going to also uh, get to the Scuttle Crab on the bot side first as well. Uh, Arch does have priority, but oh, Sean coming Sean back now. Sean is looking to get uh, a bit of a stun on uh, on Arch here, but Arch will be just fine. Of course, the Tristar not having that rocket jump. As we might see a bit of a scuttle fight here. Uh, it looks yeah. like both bot lanes... No, okay. Uh, Casual Reform does not have the priority down the bot lane, so they will just let this one go. Sad... Or, excuse me, Sage decision. Yeah, Sage. Sage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I speak English, by the way. Um, uh, but yeah, it will, uh, it will not be the double scuttle, unfortunately. As this W yeah. is going to hit, and there we go, the comment. Excellent choice. There you go. A add that extra little bit of damage in early trades. Uh, I do wonder as well, because traditionally we have seen the Comet with the more lethality uh, Jin back when you used to be able to build lethality on Jin. So I'm wondering if No Cap is going back to the old retro style, if he's going to fully commit and go for that lethality build um, again. I guess we'll. I guess that question can only be answered when we wait and see what the answer is. But what we do know for sure is in top lane, Reese's Pieces... Uh, oh. Back and teleport. oh, it just misses. <laughs> Daniel with the sh movement, just going to dodge out on that one. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, this is done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Whoa, the double comet coming through. Murphy and Harley <laughs> actually taking quite a bit of a, uh, a unfavorable trade as Daniel again with the sh movement going to dodge out with the Q. Daniel does win on the extended trades, but... Uh, the further this game goes, and the harder it is for Daniel to actually do anything up in this top lane. So if he wants to get fed, it's uh... This is about his window of opportunity, but here is Zoair, he knows this. Oh, and he's he just waiting wide. here, he's gonna have to flash out of the Scion Q, but he will be just fine. Murphy finds the death sentence. The Flay will push him back into the traps, but Harley no, does not find is. that last auto attack. The shield is going to save him. And that's a Kingsland narrowly avoiding being first blooded. Yeah, that's not what you want to see from the side of Birds Are Real. It might might not end up mattering too much as the heal is coming up now from Birds Are Real and TR just used their heal. So there actually is a summer spell advantage now for Birds Are Real. They have both the combat sums up. So there's definitely still a possibility for Birds Are Real to flip this one around, especially if a uh, CR does what a lot of teams do and gets a little bit too cocky, but this time it looks like they're not going to. You're going to play it safe, just back for the reset and uh, take the take the tempo advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we see, a bit of a gold lead actually coming out for Birds Aren't Real. Uh, that is mostly going to be from that CS advantage down in the mid lane. Um, Arch does have quite a bit of a CS lead already on Royal. Um, as we see, this game is... Pretty slow. It's uh, seven minutes now, and we haven't had that much action at all. Um, it's completely not what we're used to. Yeah, Normally, yeah. there's been like four pentacles by now. Absolutely, yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's a bit of a we're not in our comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as uh, as casters, I guess. But um, yeah. one thing that I do want to mention is that casually reformed, as you said, right? They have that absolutely monstrous scaling in the Jinx and the Azir. So I feel like the longer that this game goes, maybe the harder it is for burns aren't real. Uh, Sean here is going to flash, but his stun expires on Reese's Pieces, so he's not going to find anything. Uh, Reese's Pieces is just going to walk out of that one. Uh, unfortunate little outplay there. Yeah, I mean, he had to use his ult in the end, so I mean, I guess that's something this IDCR, but not what you want to see. Especially with this volley there, um, volley there, he's 10 CS down now, hasn't gone a gank off yet. He really needs to start making this impact early game before Lilia just completely... Ends up literally and figuratively running circles around him. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You know, the, the scaling on a casually formed uh, is good, but not for the Volibear and not for yeah. the not for the set, uh, which do absolutely get outscaled by the Scion and the Lilio. As Harley here, he's taking quite a bit of a beatdown, uh, but he's going to be just fine under his turret for now. The bowling ball will not connect. 
And Daniel here, he has a very big wave, but it looks like Sean is not interested and is just going to be taking this Rift Herald while Birds Aren't Real are going to trade it for the first dragon of the game. Yeah, you know, not a bad trade. I guess they could handshake that one. Uh, CR obviously wanting the early gold for the uh, for the tower, get some use out of the Volley Bear, and everyone likes an early ocean to decide the Birds Aren't Real, but now it looks like they might be going a little bit aggressive on the bot lane. We're going to going to back off of that last second, deciding they probably don't want to be diving the tower. Either. Yeah, I mean, it, it is possible, but uh, not in the 2v2 where you don't have your jungler or a big wave or really any advantage to, you know, mention. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and again, I mean, this this game is really slow. It's uh, pretty impressive from both teams to show this much restraint. Um, I guess it's either both teams thinking that they have the scaling potential um, or maybe they're just not finding the opportunities to punish their enemies. Not too sure. As we yeah. finally see the Volibear here trying to go for a play, but again, the rocket jump too strong. Just going to be able to buffer that stun, and Arch is just going to be fine. Yeah, I was going to say, that was a great buffer cancel by Arch on the Pistana. In case you didn't know at home, if uh, if Pistana gets stunned or CC'd in the period where she's Going into the hop, the CC won't go through, and that's what we saw there. The stun went off when she's jumping, so very well played by Arch to avoid that game. Didn't have to burn a summer on it, which is going to be pretty big. As she's um, going to be getting to a really a pretty strong power spike relatively soon when she gets her uh, her first item online. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but again, I mean, it's slow but we do have daniel here managing to find an e he is going to put a bit of beat down again on Reese's pieces as you can see they're very easy to proc the conqueror on set uh, you pretty much just use all of your abilities and it's up yeah we actually see zohair now going top side daniel's going to work but he should run into zohair right about here okay and we do see the bowling ball is going to land the sleepy will be used that is the interaction I was talking about with the Decimating Smash. Daniel is going to manage to find the W, but he doesn't find it on Zohair, which was his target. And that is just going to be a dead set, and First Blood finally going to Birds Aren't Real. Uh, good try by Daniel to ult him over the wall to get out. Not quite enough distance, but very well played by Zohair. He just played it patient, didn't want to get close. He lets Reese's pieces go up, uh, but afterwards we see Daniel no cooldowns, and he's, uh, Zohair is just about to allowed to prance up on him and get the key to a nice early first blood by Zohair. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I want to mention is that Daniel did have his flash, and I was kind of expecting him for go to a W flash, uh, yeah. where on set you can kind of channel that W and then flash it to reposition it. And uh, if he got that on Zohair, it's a 1v1 trade at the very least. Um, yeah. Kind of disappointed uh, in Daniel. Definitely could have... Uh, uh, made that a one for one, but I guess I think he thought that it would connect. Yeah, it w it was very close anyway. Yeah, it was uh, very very close, so uh, not too big of a deal. Um, as again, I mean, this bot lane is just uh, chilling. Both lanes yeah. just farming it out. Ninety-seven to ninety-one CS that we see in the uh, in the bottom lane. That's probably not what you're wanting to see if you are the side of birds on real. If, once again, you take this double comment, you're hoping for a little bit more of an advantage. But so far, Murphy and Harley have had an excellent leaning phase. Uh, Murphy, as well, has been noticeably manhandling uh, King's Land. I think there's only been one hook that's missing. It's the land that comes through the game. Absolutely. As we see Murphy here, he's going to go for the flash play. The stun will connect, and so will Death Sentence. And the Zap Mega Death Rocket will connect. Murphy will take this kill. As casually formed, not only take the kill, but will now be putting down this Rift Herald, and most likely will be giving away these plates to Harley, and that is exactly what you want to see from the side of Casually Reformed as Archie, or he's going for a null in onto Royal, as the camera does decide that the bottling turret will be more important. Uh, as the, again, uh, beautiful flay, uh, as well as the hook from uh, Murphy, is going to connect onto a King's Land, and we didn't see uh, precisely the death sentence, uh, a King's Land will be going down, and that is very, very good for Casually Reformed. Murphy is doing so, so well in this bottom lane right now. He played that gank so well, but now he's got to get his AD carry out of trouble. Yeah, we have a bit of a fight here. The curtain call will be used, but it looks like Harley will actually manage to die. And Zohair takes the double kill, 
the current calls slowing down Harley and Murphy and Zohair just running circles around them and managing to pick up the double kill. And now, what we're talking about that was so good for Casually Reformed, it's all gone. Yeah, and what, um, not only do they die there, but the wave gets pushed on them as well, so they're going to be losing a lot. So yes, Jin is going to get some plates. Jin will end up ahead after this uh, fray goes through completely on top of the two kills that were given to Lilia. That is a huge swing back in the other favor if birds aren't real. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure why Casually Reformed was staying. Uh, they had, I mean, the Rift Herd already died, um, so I guess that was just a bit of an aware extension. Yeah, you know, sometimes these mistakes happen, especially when you're, when you do something, uh, you do something nice, like, like the bot lane MCR did, you know, you start feeling yourself, you think you're, oh yeah, I can push to this advantage, I can outplay this, and uh, they get picked for, for it a little bit, giving up the advantage they've been gone, so... One, one of those plays, it's going to happen, but even still, it doesn't feel good when it does. Yeah, absolutely. As we will see this Lilia now, very, very fed, sitting on most likely quite a bit of gold. I don't think she has recalled after the double kill yet. As Sean, he did pick up his turbo camp tank as well as the boots. So that's going to feel very, very good. Uh, going to try to run some of these people down. But they have double AD carries with Gale Force, which is going to be really annoying for Sean, especially with the Karma speeding them up. Mm, yeah. I guess we'll have to see if he manages to catch anyone. As, uh, again, a bit more trading here. And the second Drake of the game is looking to be taken by Birds Aren't Real. You can see that Lilia positioning there. I think this one probably should go to Birds Aren't Real pretty uncontested. They have the bot in mid pressure, uh, as well as their jungler being so far ahead. So uh, smart, uh, smart play by CR just to concede it. Um, concede it, not risk the fight when they're at a disadvantage in the mid lane. So, um, well played, but that does put Birds Aren't Real up two dragons to nothing. I didn't quite catch, I believe it's Infernal Soul is, yeah, Infernal Soul is what's going to be on the table, uh, for, uh, for both of these teams. And Birds Aren't Real with Infernal Soul, uh, with the Karma, with the Jin, uh, with everyone else, that's going to make that really hard to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, the soul is going to be the infernal soul, right? Which is very, very powerful on birds aren't real. This Tristana and this Jin going to utilize is, utilize it so effectively. Even the karma, honestly, is uh, going to be really, really powerful with that, uh, with that poke and the comets, the double comets that we were talking about. Uh, going to be very annoying for casually reformed if they manage to get that one under the belt. Yeah, we see Zo here hovering here topside. Probably not going to result in a kill. Daniel's. A little bit too tanky to be pressured by that, but even still, Arch had it. Arch is top lane as well now. They could be looking for a play on Royal. He's looking for Royal. Royal is going to manage to EQ out of that one. He will take just a bit of damage, but that's about it. As Daniel, he's going to Stridebreaker, and Zohara is going to have to flash out. Ooh, but Harley's taking quite a bit of damage from that double comet combo. But he'll be just fine. Man, I, I'm impressed that you said double comet combo right on the first drive without even hesitating. Uh, but as we see here, you know, that, that is a huge strength of, as Natural said, the du double comet is it's so good if uh, Karma can just land the Q and Jin can land the W. It's a oh, good 200 extra damage at this point in the game. Um, and Harley showing it, you know, uh, one or two other trades like that. And uh, Harley's, Harley's going to have to back her in, uh, in range of dying. Yeah, absolutely. As we did see uh, Sean pop that turbo camp tank up in the top lane and Reese's Pieces just alt out of that one. And Arch as well. He just took a mid uh, first turret, uh, which is going to feel really, really nice. Uh, he's sitting on quite a bit of farm as well. Arch doing really, really well. Uh, yeah. We'll have to see how that pans out. Kid Karita or As Sean is here. Royal rather. here. Sean is trying to go in, but he doesn't have the turbo camp tank, so he's not going to be able to catch up. As Zohair, he here he's looking for the bowling ball. It will connect, but there is a turret there. I'm not sure if they actually want to dive this. The turret, of course, from the Azir doing quite a bit of damage at this point in the game. Yeah, you know, that looked really good up until they got him at the tower. Uh, smart play by Royal to pop the tower right before he did get finally put asleep by the Lily Elf. But even still, Arch, the standout in the story, has got, uh, got the tower early. Obviously, Tristana into Azir is a very favorable matchup for the Tristana, 
Um, so not too unexpected a lead, but getting a tower early is going to be able to open up the map so easily for them. And when you have a team, um, if when you have people like Lilia and like Zion that do really well with open maps, that's going to be a huge boon going forward. That is true. That is uh, not something I was considering. <laughs> you are completely right. The Infernal Soul does give that map that much more open space for Zion to drift through the jungle, um, yeah. which is something, of course, he'll be very happy with. As uh, again, I mean, it's it's. We were talking about how much of these games depend on the bot lane, uh, but both bot lanes here are very passive. Um, Murphy and Harley did find a lot of, uh, did find some good hooks. As I was talking about, those they're not going to find that one. Um, mm. But uh, it doesn't look like they were actually pushing any of their advantages in the bot lane quite yet. As uh, Arch, he's going to find a fully stacked bomb as well as the Gale Force, and that's more than enough to execute Royal as the Death Sentence connects onto a King's Land. He's going to have to flash out of that one. Harley does not find the Zap, but they do find the Karma, and that is going to be one excited Harley. He's going for the Mega Death Rocket, but it does not finish. No cap, only gap. He gets put to sleep, and that is a lot of damage coming down from the Lilia as well as the Curtain Skull. The W will connect. No cap, only gap, will manage to find that one. Daniel is going to have to stride break his way out. The smite does come through. Daniel is going to survive just for a little longer, but only to fall to Arch, who finds the double kill and the ace. So well played by Birds Aren't Real. They lost King's Land early, but a no gap, only cap just retreats with the ult and a huge play by Zohair going and getting a W that instantly is on his end. They truly can't get any retaliation. Um, there was no opportunity for CR to get any form of damage in on Birds and Are Real. Incredibly well played, and they're going to get a huge advantage off that. Five for one, they got bot lane tower, they're probably going to get top lane tower as well as the dragon he here. Birds Are Real just opened up the game. Absolutely, now they're in such a commanding position. They're not going to be able to go for the Drake quite yet as uh, they decide to reset instead of go for the dragon, which is honestly, you know, not too bad of a decision as long as they can keep uh, casually reformed off the dragon in the meantime. If they can just keep them from doing it while they get their items from that absolutely massive gold spike, we see the gold that just rock, just jumped from pretty much even to 5k gold ahead for bar. That is absolutely massive. Uh, and as we were talking about, they're not going to look for the Drake, but Arch isn't there. He does have the teleport though. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out as Sean, they do want to contest this. The Mega Death Rocket will not land as the teleport from Arch is going to come down. And that is five people down to the dragon. It doesn't look like they can do anything about this. Daniel just isn't there and they're just going to have to accept defeat or at least accept soul point. Yeah, that was, that was a, a feels bad man from the side of CR. Reese's pieces didn't even have to blow his teleport down. He just walked down mid and then also from there. He now uses the teleport, but they're actually going aggressive on Sean. Okay, it looks like they might want to try to find something on Sean. Sean, he still has his ultimate as well as his flash, but he's just going to die. But it looks like it's enough of a bait so that Arch dies to Royal. And Royal is going to be very happy to pick that shutdown up, but a bit of questionable decision making there. I feel like Sean might have been able to survive if he used his ultimate. As Daniel here is taking a very big beating and Reese's Pieces is just going to decimate him six feet under. Daniel, 0-3-0, not looking too, too hot on this set. Gone are the days where the set can bully the Scion around. The Scion has gone his Sunfire. He's got his full build with that Bramble Best and Steel Plated Boot Caps. That's all he needs. He's even got thrown in, in the Warden's Veil. The Scion is going to be so tanky. The only person that's going to deal any form of damage to him is Royal. But, um, so it, we're going to have to see Royal end up split pushing a lot this game to counteract pieces. Yeah, and Royal did go for the Leandries, so he didn't go for the, you know, kind of anti-backline uh, build with the Ludens. But Royal here, he actually combos in, but Reese's Peach just ults him. He's going to have to flash out of the Decimating Smash. I'm not too sure about this play, Royal. He's going to manage to find the Sun Disc, uh, which means that Reese's Pieces does have to flash out of that one, but Royal... Narrowly avoids the bowling ball. Uh, but again, Royal, the questionable positioning, but Reese's Species is going way too far deep. The team isn't there, and he's under the Sun Disc, so he will be punished, and Daniel will manage to find his first kill of the game. 
casually reformed, maybe a bit of breathing space from that one. Yeah, it looked like just a classic miscommunication there. There was Zohair with, with the bot lane up top side, but they were a little bit too far back, and as Weiss's pieces pushed in, they couldn't really contest under tower, so uh, just a little bit of a miscommunication um, there is going to leave a going to give CR a little bit of gold, but in the end of the day, it went on to... Archie is going much. to look for Harley. Harley doesn't die. He doesn't quite have the damage in the Mega Death Rocket, though. Does so much damage, and minus to find Arch. Zohair is going to flash for that one, but he's flashed into three members. He gets stunned, and he gets pulled back as my stream dies a little bit, but so yeah. does Harley. Uh, and that is definitely an overextension from Bar. They were looking so, so good, but now they're making these small mistakes, these overextensions... Do we think that the comeback is actually possible for Casual Reform now? You know, it's definitely po um, it's definitely possible. Dragon's coming up in two minutes. All birds aren't real has to do is just play it safe, make sure they get this Infernal Soul, and it should be smooth sailing from here. But CR has been doing a good job of fading birds aren't real in. Um, right now, there's still too much of a gold, uh, gold and tempo differential to say that uh, CR has a very likely chance of winning this game, but there's definitely still a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. I do agree. It looks like Bar are making these mistakes uh, that shouldn't be done, especially when you're in such a commanding position. But Daniel here, again, Reese Species now pretty much just beats Daniel as we have the W Ooh. is going to hit on Harley. And that is just going to be the curtain call that takes down the Jinx. No cap, only gap using that comet to full effect and managing to find the kill. Death Sentence will connect onto a nice line. He will be getting stunned as he's just going to die to Murphy. I think it's fair to say that Murphy's probably the best Thresh we've seen on stage so far. This man oh, has absolutely. landed enough death sentences to make a death bit a bibliography. It is crazy. Every hook is right where he's always where he needs to be with his lantern. Two, two, and five. Almost 100% kill participation um, on him. He's doing really well, but it's not enough to carry his team um, out from this hole just yet. Not quite yet, as Murphy here, he's oh. waiting for the rocket jump to cancel it with his E. He does manage to cancel it, but he predicts the Q, and unfortunately the prediction isn't correct. Arch is going to manage to find himself out of that one. Uh, but respect to Murphy is to manage to actually find that flay. And yeah, I absolutely agree. Murphy is by far the best thrash that we have seen on stage for now. Um, his thrash is absolutely... Uh, Disgusting. I'll just, yeah, I'll just throw it down yeah. there. I think it's really, really good. As Harley here, he's going to walk into the bush, and Arch is most likely going to find the 100 to 0. He does, and that is the power of the Tristana right there, folks. It does so much damage. As uh, the Sleep will manage to find Royal, but that's about it. There's no one that I can actually follow up on that. As uh, Sean here, he is going to be getting caught by the Decimating Smash, and he's knocked up for so long. He's going to have to flash out of that one, and his HP are so low. Uh, he's going back in, but I'm not sure if that's a good decision, as, yeah, he's just going to get one tap from no cap, one gap at that HP. Uh, and this is most likely going to be the Infernal Soul for Bar, and what was looking as a winnable game for Casually Reformed, uh, just turned into pretty much an unwinnable one. Yeah, Casually rethrown the game at, um, with that play from CR, uh, giving them the Infernal Soul, that's, um, is never what you want to see, but especially on a team that is so Bergstein, has such a good um, all-in as well as poke like the art, it's going to feel very bad. We saw their arc being so far ahead, just able to one-shot the enemy AD carry if Daniel goes in here. Yep, he's looking for the supreme display of talent, and he will manage to find it, but there is not enough damage to actually take down the Jin. He will be taken down by, what was that? I believe maybe that was Leandri, as the Decimating Smash will be cancelled by the Flay. Uh, the root will connect onto Harley, and that is a lot of damage, and the Comet is actually going to take down the Jinx. As Zillier here, he's in a 1v2 situation, will he actually, actually manage to outplay it? No, he will not, as Royal, it looks like he will survive. Careful of that, have that uh, Leandris burn, though. Uh, he will be okay for now, but again, these trades are not worth it for Casually Reformed. Yeah, they're so far behind at this point, they can't keep taking these small skirmishes. They're Clearly not winning them. No gap, only cap has been doing so well with his skill shots, I have to say. With the GNR, with the W, he's been able to contribute so much CC and damage. They haven't been able to kill him. They haven't been able to kill Arch. They've really just been 
fighting Sion over and over again, and Sion is 1-1-5. One, one he barely feels them at this point. Uh, <laughs> CR needs to get a game plan together because if they keep skirmishing like this, it's just going to be a, uh, a very quick loss of gold followed by the Nexus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sion is getting tickled at this point, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by anything that casually reform can output. Uh, maybe the only one that actually does damage is like Royal, somewhat. Um, since uh, Reese Beast did go for yeah. almost exclusively armor. Imagine being Harley and being like, alright guys, I can carry this game, and then just looking at Reese's pieces, having like 400 armor. Several yeah. thousand or five thousand HP. That's got that's going to be an uphill battle for Royal to deal with. Even if, even if uh, he doesn't have a lot of MR, that's uh, still a lot of HP. And Harley's just completely screwed over until he gets his uh, his Lord Dominix. It looks like he's actually going for IE next. Yeah, which is uh, which is questionable. I mean, I understand the sentiment being that Royal is going to take down the Scion, and then you're going to just be focusing down the front line. But at this point, I feel like you probably need the Harley with Lord Doms as well as Royal to take down Reese's pieces. Because he is just so huge. As a stride breaker and the E will find its way. But again, the rocket jump, so powerful to get your way out of that one. You kind of need Murphy to cancel that one or you're never going to find a pick on Arch. Yeah, that was... You You can cancel it with the SETI. We saw another nice uh, animation cancel or animation buffer from Arch doing it twice this game. You yeah. need to wait a little bit longer, but... Oh, but okay, the train is stopped by the soldiers. Uh, Reese's Pieces will find the Decimating Smash onto Royal. He will be a uh, suplex into the ground, but will they actually manage to find the kill on him? It looks like they will... Oh, but he goes for the Flash E! Reese's Pieces, he is so tanky as the three-man sleep is going to find Casually Reformed. And now Arch, it's his moment. Uh, it's the resets one after another. Will he actually manage to find three? Yes, he will. No cap, only gap is going to call it a kill secured. And this is most likely going to be the game for Bart. Now, Reese's Pieces, what was that? He saw there was one person on the enemy team that could kill him, and he 2 v one of them. Then on the other side of the map, a huge three-man sleep from Zohair on the Lilia is just going to be free pickings for the Jin ult, as well as Arch, and now they're looking dead in the game. Yeah, absolutely. This looks uh, very endable for sure, as they do have the Baron. They do not have any super minions quite yet, but I don't think it matters. Gotta watch out for the respawn timers, though. Harley in six, Royal in four. Are they going to manage to actually fight it out before this game is over is my question. Daniel is going to be taken down. The death sentence will land onto Arch. Hit the Nexus, guys. Hit the Nexus. It doesn't look like they're actually going to hit the Nexus. Never mind. It is going to go down. And Bar is going to claim the first game with an absolutely beautiful display of talent, if I might say. Uh, and a very good performance. 